Hi, I'm Hector Garcia. I'm a CPA and an advanced QuickBooks Pro advisor. I'm going to show you how to sync up your QuickBooks Online with PayPal using a new app called Connect with PayPal. I'm really impressed by this app. I think it's solving a lot of the existential issues that we have with PayPal. PayPal is kind of like this monster that accountants have to tackle because the way PayPal organizes the transactions and shows their statements it's extremely confusing. It shows pending transactions. It shows uh, things that are holds and things that clear up later and that sort of thing. So hopefully this 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 new app will solve a lot of those issues. Now, um, to enable the app, we're going to click on apps. Then we're going to search for PayPal. And it's called Connect to PayPal. That's the name of the app. And then we're going to click on opt-in or... Um, install or save or add something like that right now it's in beta today's April 14th the day of this video it's beta but by the time you watch this maybe it's not beta anymore so that's fine we're gonna click on let's do it we're gonna pretty much follow the prompt so I'll go to give permission then relaunch PayPal whatever that means <laughs> um, then my email of my PayPal account. Click on next. Login. We're going to agree. Go back to Intuit. Okay, so I'm going to click on next. Then it's going to say account name. So I guess I'm going to create a bank account called PayPal Bank. Okay, that's fine. Click on Save. Next. Uh, begin Import On. It says here you can go back up to 18 months. Okay, that's fine. Let's do 1-1-2017. Let's click on Done. Okay, PayPal's not connected. Yay. Check, check it out. Let's see what we got here. So it goes into my bank feeds and it goes into PayPal bank and it downloaded three transactions. That's well, certainly not enough. Let me click on refresh. Okay, I guess they're, they're in process of coming in. So we'll give it a few minutes. So I waited like 10 minutes and my only downloaded like six months worth of transactions. I really don't know what the what the limitations are with this, like if it actually can go back 18 months as advertised. I mean, I'm doing this video in April and this app is out in beta right now. So by the time you're watching this video, maybe uh, the connection will work for the full year or 18 months as advertised. But the way it works is the data comes in and it is in the same place as my banking module. So it looks just like bank feeds. It looks just like when you connect any of your banks and the transactions come in. There's a couple of differences. One is the sales have a little indicator here letting you know what the net sale amount is, what the gross is. And if you actually put your mouse over it, it tells you what the PayPal fee is and the amount. Now, QuickBooks will automatically enter those PayPal fees and put them in the pay, PayPal fee expense account. We can figure it in the get-go. So you actually don't have to sit there and categorize the fees. That's actually a good, really good thing. When you click on that sale uh, transaction, you have two things you can do. One is you can add it as a sales receipt or you can add it as a deposit. Uh, so it's really up to you what you're trying to achieve. If you add it as a deposit, then there's no items and you have to select uh, the account that's going to go in there. So I'm just going to throw it into the sales accounts and click on save. So that's one option. Uh, the second option is, let me scroll down, let's pick another sale account, is to create it as a sales receipt. So um, let's see this one. Okay, so this one didn't give me the choice because there's no uh, PayPal uh, fee on this one. So this is actually a transfer that I got from someone else into PayPal, but it didn't use PayPal as the merchant account. So that's actually a really good point because um, I got paid from this vendor directly without being charged by PayPal. So in this case, it will work just like bank feeds. Like I can create it as a deposit by clicking on add, 
or I can match it to an invoice. So let me just do a let me do an invoice. Let me copy the amount here and match it to the invoice. So you so I can uh, kind of show you how that works. So I'm gonna create a, a, an invoice real quick here. And my customer is Udemy. And I'll pick an item, whatever item happens to be, and I'll put the dollar amount. So this is an invoice that I would have created previous to doing the download, right? Um, that way when the download comes in, it in theory it should match. It didn't match this time. Let me click refresh real quick just to see if uh, maybe a refresh will match it. And if it doesn't match it, what I'll do is I'll do a manual match. So I'm going to click on find match and select the invoice. There it is. And click on save. So that's the matching process with a pick, uh, whatever was created through QuickBooks before the download came in. Um, and again, on this one, uh, we, we did a deposit at first. Let's do a sales receipt and let's not create the customer in this case. And let's click on add and let's, let's look for that. Let's see what that looks like. So let me look at this one. So what's really neat is with this app, if you give it, if you don't choose deposit and if you choose sales receipt, and again, if you don't create an invoice before and match it, it will actually create this whole thing you're seeing on the screen. It will bring in the customer's name, their shipping address. It will it will create a new item called PayPal sales. So that's fine. Bring the description, reference number. Uh, it would show that it came from undeposited funds, but I assume it just brings it into the bank. And what's really cool about this is it brings in a link. See, I can actually copy this link and paste it into the browser somewhere. And as long as I'm logged into my PayPal account, it would actually send me to the specific PayPal transaction. So you can see all the details, who the customer was, whatever. So that's actually pretty cool. I'm actually extremely impressed by that. Um, so those are the income coming in. Let's take a look at the expenditures. And that works exactly like everything else, right? There's my expenditure from Spotify. I can just copy and paste or, or select my vendor from the drop down menu, uh, select the category. Just that I didn't take, create a category. So let's say that's advertising and add. And that's it. Drop that easy. I'm actually really impressed by this. Um, reconciling, maybe I get, get a little bit trickier because PayPal is kind of all over the place with their statements, but it looks like I'm getting my expenses. I'm getting my, um, my income. It looks like the fees are coming in. Like for example, on this one, uh, let's see what this fee looks like. So this is a $15 and 38 fee. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to bring this in as a sales receipt, click on add, and I'm going to search for that $15 and 38. So let's see, let's go uh, search, advanced search. Actually, I should just be here, $15.38, there it is. So it creates it as an expense account. So it's actually, you can't ask for anything else. This app is absolutely uh, wonderful. Um, it looks like my transactions farther than six months are coming in, so that may take maybe up to an hour for everything to come in because PayPal does do this sort of backlog of, of transaction that you have to wait uh, to download. So, but so far, extremely impressed by this. I think this is gonna solve a lot of people's problems. Uh, we got the transfers here. This is awesome. I really, really like it. Um, I hope this actually solves your problem as well. Um, if you got a really tricky PayPal account, maybe you wanna hire someone like me to help you sort through it. But for the most part, I think this app is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for a lot of folks. So I hope you like it and, uh, and that it works for you.